alarm going off. Hold on. One sec. All right, back. Phone alarm went off. Um, yeah, I saw that. So there's a, there's like a movie you're working on, which is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep, a documentary. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Uh, what um, what stage in the documentary are you? Are you sort of? Um, right now I'm in production. Um, so I'm applying for grants and like different programs that to help like I can get like mentorship distribution. Yeah. Um, from so yeah I had a really really good meeting a couple of weeks ago uh, with a distribution I can't reveal it because I'm live <laughs> but it's huge I'm, I'm, if I name it you'll know who I'm talking about oh, okay. and so I am hoping because I got uh, interviews I'm hoping that it really comes through um, if not there are some other ones that I did apply for that I'm excited about so <laughs> Yeah, that is amazing that's really that's so cool yeah <laughs> man um well you certainly have a have a lot going on I know <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure I'm sure there's never never a dull moment for you but hopefully no. it's stuff you know, you're interested in right mm -hmm. yeah no it's all all good stuff you know that that helps keep you going you know yeah yeah <laughs> nice to stay busy sometimes yeah um, well, it looks like we are live and up and running, so uh, maybe we should get started. Uh, hello, everyone out there in our field museum learning connection community. Welcome to our career chat today. Um, I am Jenny Flowers, part of the field museum learning connection team. Uh -huh. My pronouns are she, her, and I am very excited to be chatting with my colleague Latoya Flowers today. Latoya, do you want to take a minute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Latoya Flowers. I'm an exhibition media producer at the Field Museum. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. So Latoya, we have um, quite a few questions that came in ahead of time from some of our classrooms. Um, and for anyone who is watching live, please feel free to use our chat to um, funnel some other questions to Latoya so we can learn all about uh, your career and your career path. Um, so maybe we should just start there. Do you mind kind of sharing a little bit about how um, what you do at the Field Museum and sort of how, how you got to the field. Yeah, so I'm an exhibition media producer and what that is is someone who creates like audio, video, um, immersive experiences mm -hmm. for exhibits. Um, so if you go to an exhibit and you see like a video playing on a monitor or it's something that's projected or it's something that you may see like in a rail that you have to interact with, mm -hmm. um, that's something that I usually work on. Cool. Um, so what is your, what is your background? Were you um, science, art, technology? Like how did you, how did you get into this? It's so interesting. So my background um, really stems from when I started going to film school. Okay. Um, I took an interest in documentary filmmaking in undergrad. Mm. Um, and it was something that I was really passionate about and just really excited to learn more about. Um, so after I graduated undergrad, I did a lot of internships, a lot of different places. So like at Fox News, like different mm -hmm. production companies, like really just learning as much as I can about film, produ TV production as much as possible. Because at that time, I still didn't really know right. like what area I wanted to go in. But I did know in high school that I always wanted to work at a museum. And I always wanted to create media for a museum. Um, I just didn't know like how to get there. I didn't know like who to apply for, who to apply to, and like what were all the necessary steps. So I always kept that in my back pocket, you know, put that to the side and just learned as much as I could about yeah. film, about TV production. So like I said, I did a lot of internships. Um, and then I did an internship at Cartemplin Films. That's a documentary production company here. Mm. And so working there really ignited my, my passion still for documentary filmmaking and uh, really gave me that, that boost to want to go to grad school. So I, I moved to New York and I went to grad school at the School of Visual Arts and I got my MFA in social documentary film. 
And then from there, I moved back to Chicago because that's where I'm born and raised. Mm -hmm. And I saw a job opening at the Adler Planetarium. And they were looking for a filmmaker uh, to bring them on into their exhibition mm -hmm. department and to create media for their exhibits. And so I was like, OK, like I have all the skill sets, like that's def definitely something yeah. I can do. So that's how I got into working into museums. I started at the planetarium first and I was there for four years. And then after four years, I came over to the field museum, came down the right. street. Right. On the road. Still doing the same thing, uh, creating media for their exhibitions. So, cool. yeah. Um, so one of the questions we got from Miss Perry's classroom at AVM school and this, um, speaks a little bit to something you just said about how when you were in high school you knew that you, you wanted to work in museums and so their question is what inspired you to pursue your job at a museum what how did that pathway open up for you yeah so when i was younger i used to visit the museum of science industry the field museum planetarium like my dad used to take us there all the time my brother and i all the time and so walking around the exhibits, I was always into watching the videos. Like, you know, every, everyone else wants to look, look at the artifact or the specimen. I was into looking at the videos, you know, and after ever watching every video, I would like watch the credits because they used to do that and like put who made it, cool. you know, how it was, who created it. And that's, I didn't know at that time, like I was like taking that all in, like, okay, like a production company made that and that's the name of that company. Mm -hmm. hmm, like, okay, you have to be an editor to create something like this. Like I was just really just intrigued on like how these pieces were created, how these media pieces were created in museums. So I always had a passion for it. I always had an interest for it. I love history and I love science. And I think that's where the documentary passion came from is because that's part of it. Like you can always do a documentary about history or you can do a mm -hmm. documentary about science. Um, and so I guess for me, like I just just formulated all of my passions and somehow they ended up creating a job for me, which is like amazing. Yeah. yeah like I think for me, I just kept following all the things that I really enjoy doing and watching and learning and somehow the stars align and I end up at the planetarium I ended up at the film museum so yeah <laughs> I love that it's such a great example of how you can take your multiple interests and pursue them kind of all at the same time and you don't have to just sort of do one thing but you can find find a way often to kind of like, yeah, like you said, put all your passions together and in, into something that is flexible and allows you to really like continue to grow, which I'm sure is really exciting. That's cool. Um, so we have um, another question um, from uh, Mr. Nisiak's class at Nettlehorst. Um, two part question. So in your current role at the Field Museum, what do you enjoy doing? Um, and their second question is, does art play a role in your in your current responsibilities at the Field Museum? Yeah, so I really enjoy working with different artists at the Field Museum and, and in my role, um, being a media producer, you take on many roles. You don't have just one. Like you're not just an editor or someone that, like a videographer or someone that captures audio. Like you're like all of those things. You're an animator, you, you could either be an illustrator um, and then every project is different. So my role changes on every single project. So on one project, I might be the person that's filming it or I might be the person that's editing it and I'm working with a, a team. I'm working with someone else who might be an animator or someone that might be a music composer. So that's what I enjoy is like, you know, when a project comes to me, I get to help decide, all right, well, who, who's going to be on our team? Like, will it just be me doing all, all of the roles or will I be working with a really cool illustrator and I get to work with a really cool motion designer? Mm -hmm. And then we get to work with an awesome composer. Like that's the like the fun part is is branching out and working with other people to bring our projects to life. So art definitely played plays a major role, you know, yeah. being, I have to, I'm, I'm an artist and I get to work with other artists, which is really fun. 
Yeah. Um, and I really like what you were saying too, just about collaboration. It sounds like in every project that you, you work on, it's, it takes multiple people and sort of people power to, to get it done. And I imagine um, what a great opportunity just to learn from other people and to contribute. Um, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, because like a lot of our projects are so time consuming, like it takes a long time to like create an animation. So it's really good when you are able to do that with somebody else and like you take a small role and they take a small role and then you guys, we, we bring yeah. our, our skill sets uh, together. Like that's what makes the projects even stronger and even better and even more compelling in our exhibits is the teams that we, we formulate and the collaboration um, totally. Now, I have had to do some projects like by myself, which is OK, but I really do enjoy when I get to work with other other artists. Yeah, that's like the fun part, really the, yeah. the real fun part for me. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, can you talk about a, a project that you have worked on uh, at the Field Museum, something that really speaks to you as like something you're really proud of and, um, and, are, and love to show off to friends and family yeah. when they come to visit? Yeah, actually, I can share my screen because I have a few projects. <laughs> awesome. Let me know a few. All right, go for it. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Oops. Maybe not. All right, so these are a few of my favorite projects throughout my career working at museums. Um, these are a bunch of photos that I had taken while working at the planetarium. Um, so one thing I really do want to mention is before working at the planetarium, I was not a photographer. That was something that I did not uh, really study in school, you know, because I went to film school. So yes, you learn like the learn about composition and, you know, like how to frame a shot, but I wasn't mm -hmm. a photographer. You know, that's a very distinctive field. Um, so while working at the planetarium, that was a skill set that I was able to pick up, which was really cool. You know, I was able to really become better at it and 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 actually fall in love with it. You know, like photography is now one of my newer passions. Um, and so these are some photos that I had taken, like from different events like Adler After Dark, um, some uh, events that usually would take place like on weekends, like yoga, yoga in the in the Dome Theater. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, I see that. I that's this picture right here. <laughs> yeah. um, and then like people would come showing up at, in costumes for different events. So I was able to capture all of that while working at the planetarium to really show why it's a cool place to visit. Hmm. Those photos are beautiful. Thank you. And so when I started working at the Field Museum, this was one of the first exhibits I started working on. Um, it's called Antarctic Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I created quite a few media pieces for this exhibit. But for this one, this is when I had the chance to work with another artist. Mm -hmm. um, and so my role for this was more like kind of like giving like art direction. Um, the, in the exhibit, our curators and developers wanted to create two maps really illustrating what Antarctica was like and how it changed over time. So the first map, this one that has more green lush land, mm -hmm. that's pretty much showing what and what it what Earth looked like before Antarctica became a continent. So we we're talking about Pangaea and how it broken up into several continents. Um, and then this bottom one is talking about how Antarctica became cold and icy. And so I worked with a motion designer um, to animate and illustrate these two maps. So that was a, a lot of fun to like bring these, these two concepts to life. I learned a lot in this project because I didn't know Antarctica was dry and rocky and it still is to this day and there's parts that, that is really cold and icy I didn't know it was both I thought it was just all like just a sheet of ice but it right, isn't there's right. a volcano there you know and that's how you know dinosaurs were roaming around was during the time when it was dry and lush mm -hmm. so, so yeah that was really fun to work on 
And then, of course, uh, Sue is the, the prize possession. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a project where I picked up another new skill set, which is projection mapping. I've mm -hmm. never done it before. Um, so this was my first time taking taking a, a stab at it and, and doing it. Um, so for those who don't know what, is, what... What does that mean? Yeah. yeah, for those who don't know what projection mapping is, it's when you project like, you know, video or colors or like different effects onto an object. And so for this, we had to... Our object is Sue, the skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, and so we projected like different colors onto certain bones to show which bones are injured and which bones are real. Uh, some of the most fascinating things that we know about Sue. And so we did all that through projection mapping because it would have it was a, a way to really allow our visitors to be immersed in this kind of media piece to really get up close and see all the things that we're pointing out that they probably already could see with the naked eye, but we just made it even more apparent. Mm -hmm. So like some of the injuries, like the holes in the jaw, mm -hmm. we know that probably came from an infection. We really wanted to highlight that. And we wanted to highlight um, showing that Sue was 90% complete, one of the most complete T-Rex skeletons in the world. Mm -hmm. We wanted to definitely highlight hi highlight that as well. And then in this photo where you see that's me, <laughs> that's, uh, where we were doing some testing when Sue was still in Stanleyfield Hall before mm. it moved into his new location. But in this photo, we are highlighting different injured bones. And so, yeah, that, that was the pretty much the gist of that project is using projection mapping to, to bring these mm. uh, scientific discoveries to life. <laughs> That is a really interesting combination of art and science right there. Like thinking about yeah. sort of, yeah, how to, how to combine that. That's really cool. Yep. And so during the summer, we uh, knew once Sue had opened that, that the exhibit will be, will be traveling. Mm -hmm. But of course, the real specimen wouldn't travel. They would have to make a replication. Um, and so... The thing about projection mapping is that it's very challenging to travel. You know, once you create your images mm -hmm. and you project everything, if you move the object, you have to redo the right. entire thing. And so we couldn't do that every time the exhibit travels from different cities. Um, so we came up with an alternative, um, and that was using uh, UV paint for those injured bones oh, and using cool. theatrical lighting to help fill in the rest. Um, so the show is still the exact same. Um, there's some minor light tweaks in the script uh, for traveling purposes, but everything else is still the same um, mm. that you will see at, the, at our museum. Um, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to keep the, the same essence of the show. So when it's on the road, people are still getting that same experience that everyone else gets at the museum. Right. So, right. so yeah, this was a lot of fun to like rethink how do we take projection mapping <laughs> and then turn it into something else, but still try to keep everything very similar. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, and I just want to do a, a, a little plug. So um, on your webpage, which um, we can we can send out, there's a there's a link to this, right? The Sue Show, so people can see yep. kind of like what you're saying, what this looks like um, in real life, which is it's really stunning. Yep, yep, definitely. Cool. So we'll make sure that that um, your information gets out there, so folks can check it out. Yeah, and so this is another project where I got to work with different artists to create a, a video uh, based with, on science, of course. Um, and this video is called The Permian Extinction. Mm -hmm. And this is in our newly updated uh, Evolving Planet exhibition. Um, and so we wanted to create a media piece that really kind of like show what spe species were alive before dinosaurs. Um, so this piece you would see right before you get into the dinosaur hall mm -hmm. and, then, and that's right before you see Sue. Um, and so I got a chance to work with a paleo artist who lives in Toronto. Her name is Greer. And then I got a chance to work with a motion designer, which actually is my husband. Um, oh, that's yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually he did the maps for an art of dinosaurs too. So cool. we got a chance to work together twice. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Um, and so 
my role in this on this project again was like art director like coming up with like what was what would be the look and feel for this kind of piece um helping to select who the illustrator would be who would be the motion designer and then how we would all work together and I also mm -hmm. worked with a music composer so yeah I had a really nice team for this project so it, it wasn't just me it was me and few others that we all work together to put this media piece together. But what I really like about the illustrator uh, Greer is that her species and her artwork is like, they're all like weird colors, you know? So like, instead of using browns yeah, and greens, is. she uses purples and pinks and lime green. And I thought that would be like really fun for yeah. the Evolving Planet exhibit because we wanted to refresh it and, and really like, put some oomph back into it, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. I I pitched to the team like, okay, what if we use this illustrator? Like her style is very different than what's in the hall now. And we yeah. want to create a piece that people will stop and like really mm -hmm. pay attention to it, won't walk past it. And actually really learn something about these species and how they lived and died before dinosaurs. So mm -hmm. I would say if you ever go back to the museum and you go through Evolving Planet, definitely check this out. This is a permanent media piece, so it's going to be there for a while. Um, yeah. But it's a lot of fun. It's, it's not any, it, there isn't any narration in it. It's just mainly like text and a lot of animation. It's about two minutes long and it has yeah. some sound effects and music with it. And I think it's really cool. And yeah, it, it was a lot of fun to work on. It sounds like it. And like you said, such a different kind of piece of media. Um, yeah. uh, Latoya, we have a question from Miss Manning's classroom um, about the projection mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind talking a little bit more about that and how many different like devices or like applications does it take to, to create a projection map? Um, um, as you, as we can see it in the Sioux show. Yeah, so for this, uh, we, so while doing testing in Stanley for Hall down here, as you can see, we have a projector <laughs> that we were, mm -hmm. oh, we had holding gone it. Okay. to stand <laughs> to test uh, the brightness. The uh -huh. most important thing about this project is the brightness of the projector and how many projectors we needed to use. And so during mm -hmm. this time, it was great because it was in Stanley Field Hall and we were able to bring down projectors and really just hang them and put them up to kind of see what was needed. And so mm -hmm. from during this test, we able we were able to like find out that with Sue being very long, we needed about three projectors, one okay. just for the skull itself. And then we had one for the middle which covered like the ribs and the hip and the leg. And then we had one just for the tail because the tail is so long. Is so so long, we ended up yeah. using three projectors total for the show. And then we had two extra projectors. I think you can kind of see it's hanging mm -hmm. in this photo for like captions, Spanish English, English captioning. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's how many we, we end up using. So it does sound like there's a good bit of sort of just trial and error. You just have to kind of get in there and see see what's going to work and give you the the projections that you want. Yeah, that's I mean that's really the the gist of projection mapping is like everything has to be done in person. You have to stand there and look at it and, yep. <laughs> and evaluate it and you know make tweaks and then do it all over again. Um, right. So that was really part of that entire process. So that's another reason why it was challenging to work on it. We had to wait until Sue was in its original, actually in its new space. We had to wait till Sue was like put back together and it, they didn't plan on moving it anymore before we was able to do this kind of work. But for testing, we were able to do it in San Luis Hall. Yeah. Yeah. An exercise in patience, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it was, it was a long process. It took us about a year and a half to work on it because oh, no. we had to wait until Sue was deinstalled de and then reinstalled to then begin the work. That is cool. Yeah. A lot of effort. I love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think this is one of my last slides, maybe. I think almost. Sure. <laughs> um, but this was a really cool exhibit that I got a chance to work on um, that's 
actually open now. Um, and so I got a chance to work with Elias Not Afraid uh, for this Absolica exhibit. Um, and he's a Absolica beater, um, really talented, really nice guy to work with. But we spent two days uh, filming him creating a beaded piece from start to finish. And that's in the exhibit now. Um, and it's actually like a projection of him beating and then there's a touchable underneath. So like another piece that he had made, like a replication of it, um, that you're able to like touch the beads and like smell the hide and oh, wow. really kind of like just get a, a feel for it. But yeah, I really enjoyed working on this because this was my, not my first time, but I enjoy working on projects where I'm able to like film an artist's process and see them create something from start to finish. That's something that I uh, did in in grad school. I used to make, those were like the documentary films I would make was like these artist films, like following artists, like um, oh, someone that would make claymation or, you know, be a, that's a muralist or whatever. Like those were the type of films I was really attracted to. So I was happy to take some of those skill sets from being a documentary filmmaker and bring that on to this project. <laughs> And it, yeah. I imagine it's really, um, yeah, like what an amazing opportunity for you to sort of just like meet artists one-on-one -on -one and just like understand their process and um, and their vision. That's really, um, and as an artist yourself, I'm sure those conversations are really rich. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and so I was super happy when I found out that we will be working with him and that's the kind of media piece that was needed for this uh, exhibit was yeah. really showing like the details and the time and the process that goes into making the beaded work that you see throughout the exhibit. Um, and so it's projected here on this large screen that you can see in the right hand corner. Um, and then that table yeah. is like right underneath. Um, and it's, it's not a long video, it's like a three minute video, but it's a three, it's a two days to yeah. film it, you yeah. know? So yeah. it was a lot of footage um, to edit down and to go through to really just show his process from start to finish in a seamless way. Um, so I was that was a project that I filmed and did the editing for. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun to work on. So Latoya, it strikes me as you are you showing. Thank you for putting this together because I think it just shows like the the broad spectrum of projects you you've been able to work on, um, and they're also different. So how when you're starting. Mm -hmm. When you're starting sort of a new project, how do you get yourself ready to sort of learn about something like Antarctica or, you know, Epsalige, um art? Like, how, how do you sort of get yourself, like, ready to, like, focus in on, on a particular project? Yeah, so we have a really great team of uh, content developers and curators, and we have a lot of team meetings um, really just going through each exhibit and like in full detail of what will this section be about or what will that section be about mm -hmm. and if it's if we're talking about a particular section is there a media piece that's going to be in that section okay well then what does that media piece mm -hmm. need to be about and is it connected to the content in any way so I get to learn so much about stuff that I'm working on and stuff that I'm not working on. Right, <laughs> I get to learn yeah. about the, the entire exhibit as a whole. I get to learn about all of the collaborators that's involved and all of the pieces that they're working on. So I get I get a full view of the entire story that's being put into an exhibition. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm usually brought on like very early, like once the content developers know what it is that they, they'll be working on and the curators mm -hmm. know what pieces are going in and what needs what ne what's needed to be created. Um, so yeah, that's what's helpful. That's how that's I get cool. to learn everything is really through our, our content developers and curators, like having those team meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we are almost at time, but there's there's one more question that has come up that um love to to ask you um so you are tremendously talented at what you do i think like it is just stunning what you are able to create um and so thank you for sh for sharing for sharing that with us and one thing that seems to appear to me at least is like 
you're just very, you're very confident. You're confident on just like taking on a new project and learning a new thing or like growing your skill set. Um, and I think that's, it's just really wonderful to kind of like to see that from you. And so I'm wondering about, do you have advice for like instilling that in the young folks who are watching, watching you talk today, sort of how, how to build that internal confidence and just willingness to try new things and, um, and experiment sort of with your skills? Yeah, I think it comes from like always being open to learn new things. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so important when you are in a position like mine or if you went to film school or you want to go to film school or you want to be involved in any kind of media where you're either filming or you're a photographer or you're a projection mapping artist, you're constantly learning something new all the time. So you have to always be open to that. Either either it's self-talk or you're learning from somebody else. I'm really big on teaching myself. Like I taught myself photography. I taught myself projection mapping. And that comes from uh, looking at other people's work who are, who, are, who are excelling at it and who are really good at it. I get inspired by other artists. Mm -hmm. So 90% of my time, you know, is researching other artists being like on, I'm on their websites, like looking at how they create their projects. Um, and then when it's time for me to work on something, I use those as references. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I, here's a projection mapping artist that I really admire. And I think we should do something like this for our exhibit. You know, that's really helpful. Um, and that that's a motivator when you are inspired and excited about other artists and that kind of like gives you, you know, a, that jump starts like the fire to make you want to yeah. learn more and to do more when you're seeing other people doing it. Because you're like, hey, I, I think I could do that or I'm interested in doing something like that. But I don't know where to start. Start researching other artists and start kind of learning their path, either reaching out to them directly and asking or just following their work, you know, and seeing how the steps that it, it takes to get there. Um, that's something that I've been doing and that I intend on always doing. I feel like that's been really beneficial in my career because when I was in film school, I learned about how to shoot and how to edit. And that was about it. Right. You know, everything else has come from being self-taught out of school, you know? So I, I guess my advice is if you decide to go down this path is to always be open to teaching yourself new mm -hmm. skills you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Lydia, you are an amazing example of just someone who is a lifelong learner and curious, um, but you're also, you know, you're willing to put the work in and like you said, sort of um, teach yourself. And I think that's just really, it's, there's a lot of powerful lessons in that. So um, thank you so much. Uh, we are at time that half hour just like flew. Um, thank you so much for, for, chatting with us today and for answering all these great questions. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. You're just, it was really fun to learn about what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It was really fun to talk about work. I enjoy it. Um, anytime I get a chance to give people advice on how to get here, I'm definitely open to doing that because like I said, when I was coming up, I didn't know how. So yeah. I always try to extend my services and give people as much knowledge <laughs> info as possible to make it a little easier for them but yeah definitely <laughs> awesome well awesome. thank you for doing just that today um, with all of our <laughs> field museum learning connection classrooms um, so thank you so much and to everyone who is viewing today thanks for all the great questions and for joining us and we will see you at the next career chat so thank you so much thank you <laughs>